Hey Laura, this is Suzanne, and um, I wanted to go over one of your heart rate files uh, with you. Um, there are two that I'm going to go over, and both of them will demonstrate some things that uh, make it really important to gather data when we can so that we can improve your training and uh, maximize your improvement and your, your skills. So I think both of these will be really revealing for you. Um, this, is <clears throat> this is incidentally one of the heart rate files that um, didn't upload correctly when I looked at it through the, um, the public viewer, um, there's no data here, but I can look at the same file directly in Training Peaks. So maybe this is what you're seeing. Um, this is a workout that, um, I'll show you the description here. This is the 432 build tempo. Um, easy, 10 minutes easy warm up, then two to three rounds of four minute tempo, three minute threshold, and two minute VO2. Um, so a couple of, a couple of things. Um, I haven't uh, specifically given you what your heart rate zones for each of these um, zones should be, what your targets are. So I, I apologize for that. That's my, um, my fault for not uh, reviewing that data with you. Um, thing number two is that your heart rate zones, you mentioned here, had a hard time getting into zone five. Seems I can get my heart rate up faster running. Um, that's absolutely true, and that's true for everybody because biking is a seated sport. Um, you don't have um, as much, there aren't as many muscle groups using because you're not fighting gravity. You don't have to hold up your posture. You're not using your arms as much. Um, and so you're just not using as much muscle mass. So heart rate on bike will always be 10 to 20 beats lower for the same relative effort than on the run. And um, I'm going to go back and review your, um, the, uh, the test that you did a few weeks ago and show you that information as well. So I'll get rid of that one. So that was the workout. It was 432 build tempo. So when we look at your heart rate file, um, you did a really good job. You can see these steps here. The red line is your heart rate file. So we can see um, probably started it there. Oh, this isn't, interface isn't allowing me to select the durations, but you can see from about 9 minutes to 13 minutes, um, or sorry, 14 minutes, and then 14 to 17 minutes, and then 17 to 19. So that fits exactly the 432, and that's exactly what I wanted you to do. And you can see that the heart rate climbs from about 140 to 150 ish to 155. So you did those uh, and then you rested. You can see between um, here, which is at about 19, uh, 19 and um, 22 minutes, so you had about three minutes rest. And then you repeated the same, um, uh, same three steps again. Uh, and then again, a rest and then a cool down. So it looks like you went through two cycles of this. Um, and uh, so the, I wanted to point out that you did a good job of escalating your effort. Um, I think that you may be trying to hit too high of a heart rate um, for each of the zones. And I'm going to review that with you, like I said. However, the other thing that I wanted to point out to you is also on this graph, I have the uh, miles per hour and the RPM on here. So I'm fairly certain you did this um, indoors on a, uh, a trainer bike and not outdoors. And you can see that these two lines, RPM and speed, um, are exactly matched. So your RPMs here are about um, 70s, still not letting me highlight them, and your speed is, um, I don't really care what it is because it's indoor trainer, uh, which isn't real accurate, but 12 miles per hour. Up here your cadence for the next effort gets to about 84, uh, and your speed is right on the same measurement scale, and then your top cadence is 92, and your top speed is also 16-ish. Um, so you can see the same three steps here. What this tells me is that you didn't shift gears at all. So again, this is something that, um, that we learn as we go along. I learn what kind of information I have to give you so that the workouts are going well. So you didn't do anything wrong. Um, I don't want you to interpret it that way. What I do want you to see, though, is how easy it is to tell that um, when you increased your cadence, your speed went up, right? Whatever gear you're in, if you spin the pedals faster, you're going to uh, move the wheels further and you're going to speed up. However, the, the muscular effort that you use at each of these different cadences, so as you're doing your efforts, um, cadence of, we'll just say 68, cadence of 76, um, looks like 68 was the recovery, 76 for the first um, level, 84 for the next level, and then up to 92 for the third level. Those are three types, three different types of muscular involvement. Um, 
low cadence at an easy effort um, isn't going to feel too taxing, but it's going to be more strength work. The lower your cadence, the more you're relying on muscular effort to, to move the pedals around. Um, what we want to work towards in the long run is the ability to sustain a cadence more along these lines up here between um, you know 85 to 95. There's, there's no magic number. For me, my natural cadence when I'm well-trained is actually um, about 95 to 100. It's just where I feel comfortable. What that does is begin offloading some of the muscular work, shifts it to the cardiovascular work, and um, it's going to allow you to cycle um, further and faster with less leg fatigue um, by using higher revolutions but lower strength with each, um, each revolution that you do. Uh, we can talk more about the, that later, but bottom line is that by downloading the heart rate training data, you can see exactly what's going on. There's actually a lot of information here. Um, so really good work on escalating the efforts. You follow the instructions well. What I would like you to start doing for almost all of your workouts, unless it's specifically stated that I want you to do a cadence of 50 to 60 or 60 to 70 or 80 to 90, is try to bring your cadence up to 85 to 90. Um, and practice up there. So for these easy um, efforts down here where your heart rate was fairly low, uh, below 120, shift to an easy gear where you're spinning at a cadence that's up at this level here, but your heart rate remains low. Um, that's going to take some practice, and if you're not used to doing that, you may find that your heart rate climbs, and that by itself gets you breathless. Uh, and that's okay. It's all just a matter of practicing. In the long run, we want to find an, uh, an easy effort that allows you to spin with a nice cadence um, that's going to smooth out your uh, triathlon racing and, um, and give you more endurance and save a lot of your strength for the run, which in your case is especially important because you're planning to do um, a marathon after your bike. Um, that's it for this video. I hope that makes a lot of sense.